Today I have two shorts to share with you, the timeless classic styles that are made out of linen, the ones that are staples that you're gonna wear a billion times, sneak peek black and navy, cool little fun details to see, a fun one for you today, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today I have two shorts to share with you. Now this was not a make or a project I had planned at all, but as usual, and I'm sure as most of you, you see new pattern releases come up and then sometimes you're inspired. That's what's happened to me this week. Uh, just earlier this week, Sinclair Patterns released a pair of shorts pattern. It's called Jakarta Shorts. And when I saw the tester versions and just all the information about them, I loved them immediately because there's just lots of features on these shorts that tick a lot of boxes for me. Just the overall look of them, I really like. I will put some line art here so you can see. There are two inseam options, so a shorter type short and a longer one. And you know, I like the longer ones in my teens, the shortest possible, that was my style. But I am obviously not in my teens and I feel very comfortable now with shorts that hit above the knee. The general silhouette of these is like a slim type leg. It's not loose, it's not fitted, it's just right. You know, so it's semi-fitted at the hips and the thighs. And you know, the best, best, best feature is that this has a yoga waistband. Now I have hacked yoga waistbands onto other pants, other styles and stuff like that. This is not the case. This is designed for comfort in mind. And you know, I'm all for comfort and yoga waistbands. Once you start sewing them onto things, it's really hard to not sew them. But this pattern has that and there are really cool patch pocket options for the front and the back there's also a fake fly feature on the front that you can top stitch and you know i like doing these when i choose solid colors when there's a print going on i sort of ignore that feature because you can't see it but with a solid you can and one of the little cool features is that there's these little tabs on the side they are originally intended for the shorter inseam options so you sew them at the side seam and then you can flip the hem up a little bit and it's really cute feature. I've actually decided to use these tabs in a different way and I had a lot of fun doing that. It was a spur of the moment thing when I'm looking at these tabs thinking my shorts are long. I don't want to fold them to make them shorter because I like them long. So that was a lot of fun that I had doing this. Now last week I sewed a lot. If you've been following along last week I made four pairs of pants um, in a short period of time. There was a lot of sewing and a lot of editing and I hurt my body by doing that to myself. <laughs> so I've spent a few days with a lot of aches in my joints, in my shoulders, that sort of thing. So I did take it easy this week and it took me a while to sew these. These are the only two things I've sewn this week. So that was a big change for me. The dress you saw in the previous video was done months ago, <laughs> so that's okay. This is a perfect project for me to come back into sewing after taking a few days off because I was so excited about sewing them. Now, you know, you might think, oh, you know, a pair of shorts, but actually, you know, I wear a lot of shorts and these shorts are really cool. And I wanted them to be staples because I know it's a style I really love. As for the fabric, you see me going on about I like flowy fabrics, I like this and this flowy style. No, not for this style. For this style of shorts is the one that you can pull out your structured fabrics, even your quilting cottons. I'll put a list here of fabrics that are suitable. Linen, linen, rayon blend, uh, cotton, cotton twill, that sort of thing, like denim. Actually, with denim, it would be beautiful. I just didn't have the right weight in denim. To so you can keep the flowy fabrics to designs that have a more wider type leg, not for this style. And of course, you know, if you choose a really flowy fabric, like even the heaviest of rayon twill, the pockets are just gonna drape too much and they're not gonna hold their structure and they might look really floppy. Even if you've been holding nice quilting cottons, and you have a hard time pairing them to an actual garment, not a quilt, you know. Get out your quilting cotton because it's gonna work with these <laughs> shorts. I don't have quilting cottons, by the way, but I do know that a lot of seamstresses have them and love them and always want to use them for garments. That's why I'm making a big fuss about you using quilted cotton for this style. Now, it is mentioned in the pattern that you can use a stable knit and you need to size down for that. And they mentioned Ponty and Liverpool. Um, I, I don't really, I don't wanna make shorts in a stable knit. That's just too hot. 
and if I want to make shorts in a knit I would prefer to find a pattern that is designed for knit fabrics that will have negative ease at the hips. Um, in my personal preference I think shorts made out of knit fabrics need to be fitted at the hips and that involves one or two inches of negative ease which is not the case with this style because it's mainly designed for woven. So even though it is mentioned as a possibility, um, I personally wouldn't uh, try to make them in a knit. And you know, if you do and you size down, you might end up shortening the rise by sizing down as well. So keep that in mind when you wanna size down a lot. Just an, just an observation. Now for the waistband, I did mention this was a yoga waistband. So they do mention choosing a type of knit that has spandex or lycra or elastane, their equivalent names. This lycra, elastane or spandex is what is weaved into the cotton or whatever knit you're choosing. And that is what is going to let it stretch and recover. So I decided to use basic colors, basic colors, so they would go with every single thing I own. So the pattern suggests that whatever knit you're working with has at least 5% of spandex in there. You need to test and stretch and see if it's going to recover. Otherwise, the instructions do mention adding an elastic with the yoga band construction to make sure that these aren't going to fall off you. In Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you two types of knits that I think are appropriate and how you can adapt to using them. But as you know, I hoard a lot of fabric for yoga waistbands only and they are the heavier type cotton spandex that has 10% spandex. But I'll show you more about that in Up Close and So Personal. If you don't know, Up Close and Sew Personal is a very practical sewing segment that is inserted into every one of my videos, well, 99% of them. And that's where you can get a lot of practical sewing knowledge and tips and just discovering new ways to do things. Um, from all my years of sewing experience, it's been 30 years and I love sharing all my little tips with you. So Up Close and Sew Personal is where you find that within all my videos. So depending on the weight of the knit that you've chosen for your waistband, you might want to think about using a wide waistband option or a narrow waistband option. So I'll discuss that further. I have chosen the narrow waistband options because my fabric is, is pretty sturdy and has a lot of recovery, you know. So what fabrics did I choose? <laughs> I've made two and I've made them in colors that will go with every single thing in my wardrobe, navy and black. The black is 100% linen, the navy is a linen rayon blend, 55% linen, 45% rayon. It's a, a type of blend that I can find quite easily here and I like how it feels. It's structured enough, a little bit drapey but still structured to hold up a patch pocket. This pattern comes in sizes 0 to 30 US. That will accommodate a waist of up to 52.4 inches and a hip of 63 inches. Now I mentioned that this was a semi-fitted style. It is also described as mid-rise, so it's not meant to hit the natural waist and it's always good to know what the intended design is. And there is about two inches of positive ease at the hips, which is my preferred amount of positive ease on pants or shorts because it makes them comfortable, it makes them fitted but not tight. It doesn't make them loose or baggy either. And I think it usually achieves the best result. Uh, on the back as well when you have that amount of ease and this is what this pattern has. So the short version has a 4 inch inseam and the longer version has a 9.6 inseam but also before you even look at the size chart and everything you need to find out what your height is. I think most of us know how tall we are because Sinclair Patterns has three separate drafts for petite, for regular and for tall and you can see on the screen what the heights are for these types of drafts. A better fit if you choose one that is designed for your height. So you probably not need to add to the legs or take away from the leg because it's taken the person's height into account. And this is so cool with this brand. I love that because I choose the tall draft. I would say for 99% of the shorts I make because I want them to hit above my knee, I need to start cutting the leg and adding paper there to make the legs longer and that sort of thing. I didn't need to do any of that with this one because I chose the tall draft and the long short version and I end up with shorts that are hitting exactly where I want them to be for my height, you know. Looking at all the measurements, I chose to do a size 14 for the waist and then I blend it out to a 16 at the hips. I did make a muslin for these and before even making the muslin, I measured my pattern as I always do. I draw the seam allowances on the pattern. I pin on the waistband to have the total length 
and I measure that, compare it to my body, and then I ended up adding to the rise in the amount that was necessary for, for them to fit the way I wanted to. If you want to know more about how to adjust the rise, either lengthen or shorten, I have a very in-depth video on my Let's Sew Easy Pants feeding series, and this is how the thumbnail looks, so you can see more about that. That is the only adjustment I needed to do. You can see a graphic here. I ended up adding an inch to both the front and the back equally so that the side seams would match. But I did slash and spread to add only in the center front half an inch more. So I have a total of one and a half extra on the front and one on the back. And that is for it to hit my waist and not mid rise. And also I always have a longer than standard rise even if this pattern was drafted for a taller woman. My rise is just super long, like I know that about my body and I, I sew, I can adapt that and so can you. In Up Close and Sew Personal, you're going to see the layout of one of these shorts, a little trick I did to make them fit into my fabric, something that you can do as well and it's got to do with the seam allowances. And you're gonna see practical aspects of these patch pockets. I mentioned that the little tabs that are available for the hem, I've used them in a different way and I'm gonna share that with you. That was the most fun aspect of sewing these for me because I could see them in my head. I love the way they turned out. I have a remnant, you can see there's these little cuts here from another garment, this blue linen navy. And I have about 32 inches in length there, just under a yard. And for this size 16 that I'm sewing, um, I'm actually doing 14 waist blended to 16 hip. You can see that the pattern pieces meet right there, like they're right next to each other. And I've got that side seam on the selvage. Now I don't mind doing that on the selvage because it's not an ugly selvage and it's going to be within the seam allowance. So it's not a horrible selvage, it's mainly navy blue and it's just got a little white streak on the edge and it will be hidden in the seam allowance so I don't mind doing that. And the other trick I did because this was not fitting, <laughs> this pattern uses 5.8 seam allowance everywhere. So what I've done is on this here and on this inseam, I've actually done it on both curves there. I've trimmed it down to 3 8 I've trimmed down this to 3 8 and the inseams. So I've written that on my pattern piece so I know, you know, I'll probably trim the side seams to 3 8 as well but they are 5 8 right now. I'll just sew these with a smaller seam allowance so that that's how I can get the pattern piece to fit. Even if I did sew them at 5 8 here, I would still trim it down to 3 8 when I'm surging. So it's just wasted fabric there and it, this wouldn't fit, like this edge of the hem next to that wouldn't have fit. So I'm always willing to trim away seam allowance, especially when it's 5 8 it's like the biggest seam allowance. For these specific shorts, I will have 5 8 only on the side seams and 3 8 everywhere else. But after I've cut out this thing, I'm going to trim the side seams as well so that it, all of it is 3 8 and I'll write that down everywhere so I remember for the next pair I make. That is the patch pocket that goes on the front. That's a patch pocket that goes on the back and look, it's got some lovely designs. I think I'm going to sew them. <laughs> These little tabs go at the side, like when you want to roll up your short. I need to cut these two and then two more, so four. This pattern has a super wide waistband, so if you were working with a lighter weight knit, you can make it really wide and then fold it over twice on your waist and it could be super comfortable. But there's a line, there's a mark there to cut a narrow waistband and that's what I've done. I've just folded this in half. And this is the width of the waistband that I prefer. I want to show you the difference between two types of cotton spandex. This darker navy is the one I'm using for waistbands. It's heavyweight, it's got 10% spandex, 90% cotton and it just has better recovery. Like it'll spring back and it's got so much more elastin. And this is what I prefer because then I don't have to use an elastic, you know, in addition to the yoga waistband. So this would be my preference. Now I have this other cotton spandex, lighter weight, 95% cotton, 5% spandex. It does stretch, but it recovers less. Like it'll just, it just doesn't have enough spandex to hold up. So in this case, if I had a lighter weight like this, I would do the wide waistband that you fold over. And then I would add elastic as per the instructions to make sure that the 
shorts are gonna stay up in this case because this is heavier has more spandex just recovers better I'm just gonna do the narrow one without the elastic this is the front and this is after I've done that length adjustment here uh, to add what I needed that I added an inch and then I spread open and added half an inch across so that sort of has changed the shape right there and when I put the patch pocket on top that has been drafted with the original shape of the front you can see that I've got a different shape here on the top compared to there so I need to adjust that and on the top here on the patch pocket I'm missing like half an inch up there and then tapering to nothing right there so I'm just going to put some paper behind there and complete this gap that I'm missing from the patch pocket just because I've done adjustments down to there so that's a tiny little change I'm going to do to the patch pocket to make it fit my adjustments but I mean this is so easy it's just a patch pocket so you can see I've added paper there to the patch pocket to complete the top here so that it does reach the waist and it has the same shape so just think about what you've changed and how that will affect the pockets patch pockets are very easy to adapt trying to batch make these two pairs of shorts so I've got the wrong side down there that's the part where I fuse that strip of interfacing to stabilize this slash area so it won't gape and stretch out so I've got the right side of the fabric there and these are the facing pieces I've got chalk marks to signify <laughs> the wrong side of the fabric so I've got right sides to right sides and I've just lined these up along these slash lines there for all these pockets and now these need to be sewn 5 8 of an inch seam allowance this raw edge here needs to be folded in by 5 8 of an inch seam allowance like that and then that gets flipped well first you trim off the seam allowance you under stitch then you flip it and then top stitching I'm going to show you how to finish one pocket so I've got the pocket there you can see that's where I interfaced and I've got the facing on the back there and I've got right sides together and I think I'm just going to sew this with 3 8 seam allowance it'll just be easier and it won't really make that much of a difference in the pocket so I'll start right at the bottom there so if I'd sewn this at 5 8 I would trim this down but I don't think that's too much bulk there so I'm just going to leave that and now I'm going to open this up this is the right side of the pocket. Flip the seam allowance towards the facing and under stitch there so that the facing stays inside. Sometimes I use the edge foot, I'm just going to use the normal press foot. Now you see you met it here at the top and then here on the side where the hip this protrudes, but it has to be that way so that it matches on the side. So now this raw area here. You need to press this in by 5 eighths of an inch now i can sort of eyeball that seam allowance um, i don't need to go to the ironing board either because you can finger press lean in so i find this easier quicker saves me a trip over there but if you're not used to doing this a guide stitch might help you on the sewing machine with a long stitch length and then you can actually go to the iron and press this in neatly but bam pressed <laughs> so this gets folded to the inside of the pocket and becomes the facing there and I am going to pin this there and then hand baste it down I really want it to be super neat because the contrast top stitching with another color thread is going to be done here from the right side of the fabric and so I'll just be top stitching there and then that completes this area of the patch pocket where you put your hand in and then you would have to serge the bottom there and serge here fold under and then put it onto the front leg this is one of the front patch pockets um, as I mentioned I was going to flip and hand baste I have done that and then I have top stitched on the right side I'm using green top stitching thread and I top stitched an inch away from the edge I have already folded these edges in 
and now it's just ready to be put onto the leg. Now this facing bit here, it does sort of protrude and everything. So after everything's done, you need to trim this out so that it takes the shape of the hip there. And there is a little tiny area there that was going to be left raw. So I did surge that little end right there so it's protected. Now the hip seam will go there so it will cover most of that but it was going to leave a tad bit of raw area there. These are the back patch pockets for the black shorts and these little tabs are originally designed to be put on the hem so you can fold up and like do a cuff and put a button on the side but I like the length of mine I don't plan to use these there and for these I want to have this look here so it'll be like a fake tab, it'll just be decoration basically and I'll just sew on a button there, I won't do a button hole. So I have done just a narrow top stitch there around the edge and this I'm just going to fold it back and I have surged that raw edge there but I know I want it in that position there. So I'm going to let go of this pin, flip this back, pin it there. And just along on top of that grey top stitching, I'm just going to sew with black thread so that it's invisible. I'll just probably do like two rows there to hold it down. And that's it. Then I'm just going to fold it forward, find the right position and just sew on a button and it'll just be purely decoration. For the navy blue, I want to use the same tabs <laughs> and I've top stitched them as well in green. But I want to put them on the front, in these front patch pockets. So I've also searched that raw edge there, I'm going to find a place, put them there and do the same thing, just find the, the space where I want it to be and then flip this, sew it down there with navy thread so it's not visible, fold it and then just sew a button there and it will just be decoration, that's all. I mean I'll sew it to the pocket so I can still put my hand in there but it will just be for looks. the black pair I hope the camera picks up the details uh, I've had this linen for years I picked it up in the markets in Bolivia and it was about 10 meters there and I've made countless garments and I still have some left for more very nice quality very soft it's just really nice and I've tried not to even breathe on them to not crease them for you so they can look nice but you know there is my yoga waistband. As I mentioned, I chose a narrow option because my waistband is super sturdy. If I tried to make the tall one and fold it, it would just be too bulky. But if I'd chosen a lighter weight one, I love the look. And even in the instructions, the sample there in the pictures is so pretty. I'll put the picture here so you can see how it looks. It's super pretty. But for this knit, I didn't think it was necessary to do the tall waistband. Touch pockets, I did one row of top stitching at an inch from the edge and then a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I've chosen to highlight the details with grey top stitching thread. I think it looks really nice with black. It looks really classy in my opinion, I like that. And because I wanted these to be dressy type shorts, I didn't do that much top stitching. So there's just one row on the edge there for the front patch pockets. And for the fake fly, I just did one there as well. And this would mimic what I would do with normal pants. If I were doing dressy pants and had a fly, I would just do one, one row of top stitching. I wouldn't do double. That's like more for jeans, in my opinion, for denim. So if you're making shorts out of denim, go, go ahead and do all the top stitching you want. You know, but for this, I wanted it to be more discreet. So that's how that looks there. On the back, I've gotten these tabs and you saw what I did there. I love that. I think it's so cool. It just gives it something different. I love this detail on the patch pocket. It was already there in the pattern as an option and I liked it. It's nice and elegant in my opinion. And I've only sewn on the edge there as well just to keep it discreet. I didn't top stitch any of the crotch curves or anything like that. And on the legs, I did top stitch the inseam only just to give it something. Uh, the hem is done with black thread. I don't like highlighting the hem like with a round sort of thing that goes around your leg. I don't think it looks very nice. <laughs> so I will rarely top stitch uh, with the contrast color there on the hem. 
and they are just so pretty and they fit amazing. The feet adjustments I did were super minimal in my opinion. I know I want to do rise adjustments, especially if I know that I want mine to hit my waist and not be mid-rise like it's described. And you know, it's very simple to do. I did a touch on the waistband to measure my pattern pieces. I love these, let's see how they look. These are my black Jakarta shorts. I've made them with linen and I made the longer inseam option. It's about 10 inches. This is my preferred inseam for shorts that are a little bit more formal and for any shorts actually. And I've always been a shorts and heels type of girl. Um, comfy heels of course and this is how I would wear these shorts. Just a simple top like this and the pants are dressy enough to bring the outfit up. So I've got a half tuck situation going on there so you can see the details of the shorts. You can see some top stitching there for the fake fly and the patch pockets there. I've chosen to top stitch that way. I think it looks discreet. I wouldn't go overboard with the top stitching so on this patch pocket I just did a narrow top stitch there. I like the feet at the front. Everything about the feet is amazing after I just did a rise length adjustments that I had to do and I have a comfy comfy yoga waistband there, so comfy and at the back I've got my patch pockets that I've used the design on the pattern to top stitch there, I think it's really pretty and these tabs, I've just put them there as decoration the tabs are meant to go there on the hem of the shorter short version and that allows you to fold up and look super cute but I don't really want that feature on mine because I like long shorts but I thought the tabs were really cool to use somewhere else do love the feet on the back everything is really good and I love the silhouette that is like a slimmer shorts it's not wide it's not tight either it's just just right I love this style like this so I've chosen gray to top stitch the, the little details but I did hem with black thread because I never really want to highlight a hem I don't think hems are pretty in that way that they need to be highlighted with top stitch thread especially with shorts so yeah no top stitching for the hem but yes for all the other places and to keep it consistent just one narrow edge stitch there just one row here for the fake fly just one here for the back patch pocket and I have top stitch the inseam same just one narrow row of top stitching super happy uh, these are classic, they're a staple. Maybe you can see the parrot there. I'll put a little arrow to it because it's camouflage. It's moving a little bit. If they make noise, they are the culprits. They are always around. This is the second pair, navy pair. They are super the same. I did have issues with cutting this one out because I was using the leftovers of my Sienna Maker jacket that I made last year in navy linen. I'll put a picture here of the jacket. I always knew I had enough for a pair of shorts there, so I was holding on to that fabric and finally, yeah, I'm not going to wear them together, you know, I don't do that sort of thing. But I didn't have the width here to do the fake fly. I had to fold away the fake fly and just sew a normal seam on the front, so that feature is not there. And the tabs, I've sewn them onto this patch pocket there, and I think they look so cool. I mean they are non-functional, they serve absolutely no purpose other than looking pretty. I have a little stash of metal buttons that are maybe one or two of each that I've been holding for years on end and it was great to get these little buttons that usually don't work for anything and to use them on these projects where I just needed one and two, so that's cool. I did the same style of top stitching in military green thread, I thought that would look nice and different. And on the back, I use the same design in the pattern, nothing different there for the top stitching there. And I have navy cotton as well, the same weight as, as the black one because I always stock up on the, those two colors because it's the colors I mainly use when I put yoga waistbands. 
I love that this pattern has a yoga waistband because it feels like I'm not cheating the, the original design or doing anything like that like I've done in the past. So I love that. Um, if you want to see how to sew a yoga waistband on, it's really straightforward. I will link a video down below so you can see how to do that. Because I didn't film that, I've done it so many times already. <laughs> and also here I did the hem with navy thread so nothing would stand out. Love these. You know I'm a big lover of navy so these are going to go a long way in my wardrobe. So let's see how these look. Well, they look very similar, but just see them as well. These are right above my knee. I love that length. I always pair shorts with heels or wedges or some type of shoe like that. I wouldn't use these in a sporty sort of setting or style. And I've just got a really old ready to wear top made out of lace. And I really, really like this in navy. It will go a long way in my wardrobe. It is a staple, it's a classic. To make these a little bit dressier, I did discreet top stitching. I have the patch pocket there sewn on the edge. And then the tabs that are meant to go on the hem, I just put them there as decoration with a button. It's not functional, I just sewed the button on. I can still put my hand in there. And patch pockets have got to be my favorite types of pockets. I love that they're easy to do, they don't create bulk and they also look pretty on the front if you top stitch them nicely. With prints you can't see them but with this you can. And I have done green top stitching, like military green, I like that combination. And the pockets at the back are simple, I did use the design provided in the pattern, um, I'm not creative that way to create my own design, so that was nice. I did sew them on higher, like an inch higher than the mark so that they, they are where I want them to be. And the fit is outstanding, I really like the fit. After customizing the length of the rise to fit my body, all I needed, nothing else, nothing done to the inseam or to the shape of the front and the back crotch curves, and I am very happy with these. So I have navy and black shorts in a style that is really nice, and these are gonna be worn like all the time, all the time with anything and I can make them dressy like this because this is how I like to dress so I love that You know, maybe these aren't the most exciting makes I've ever shown you. I haven't chosen amazing prints, but let's be honest, these are the things I'm gonna wear a lot. Black, navy, can't go wrong. They will go with everything. They are exactly the style that I love to wear, the length, the type of leg, width, the fit. I love the patch pockets. I just loved everything about the pattern. And you know, it's up to you what style of short you want them to be. I wanted them to look dressy and it's all about the fabric choice and your top stitching choices. If I'd chosen a nice lightweight denim, I would have gone crazy on the top stitching and I would have done all the top stitching in the world um, because th those are more casual just being denim. But for linen, I wanted them dressy and you know, I'm a dressy type of person. I'm, all, <laughs> I'm usually overdressed and that's just my style. That's how I like to dress. I like to wear shorts with heels and you know these are perfectly uh, adaptable to be worn in the way that i like that i prefer for my style and in the way that i feel great in so i love this pattern it is still on sale up till today i believe tonight i think so there is a discounted price because it's just been recently released and if you want to try them, I'm sure you're going to have a great experience and you are welcome to use my affiliate link if you want to and that helps support me, what I do here on the channel as well. I've had a lot of fun returning to sewing after not sewing for a few days and I hope you have been okay. Look after yourself, don't sew as much as I do because you might get aches and pains from that. You know, it's incredible, but you do. Anyway, I will be back soon with more sewing for you. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon. Bye!